Welcome to Alimentary, the podcast series where you will learn about your amazing body, how it works, and of course, why food is so important, and also pick up some simple recipe and lifestyle tips and tweaks to help you to influence your health in a positive way. In this episode of Alimentary, I am delighted to be joined by my guest, Jenny Dillon, who is a yoga and physical fitness instructor based in Kings Court, County Cavan. Jenny's business is called Mind Body Connect, and our conversation focuses on the healing and potentially transformative practice of yoga. Yoga is an ancient practice that originated in India over 5,000 years ago. It is deeply rooted in Indian philosophy and spirituality, evolving through various stages and schools of thought over the centuries. It is a practice of harmonizing the body with the mind and the breath and uses poses, breathing techniques, relaxation, meditation and sometimes chanting to achieve this. Today, yoga is practiced globally and has evolved into numerous styles and forms, ranging from the physically intense to more meditative and restorative. However, the core philosophy of yoga as a path to physical, mental and spiritual well-being remains intact. When Jenny started her business as a fitness instructor in 2019, her motto was better mind, better body. She has always taken a holistic approach with clients, focusing on improving both body and mind with her own brand of personal training. Better Mind, Better Body remains at the core of her business as it has evolved to include her own style of yoga and fitness classes, workshops and retreats with a focus on connecting the mind and the body, empowering her clients with simple tools to thrive in everyday life with breathing, movement, meditation and mudra. Jenny says that her yoga journey to date has provided her with much wisdom and so many benefits physically, emotionally, mentally and spiritually. In our conversation, we delve into the benefits of breathwork, finding balance, connection and how yoga can have transformative impacts on other areas of our lives. Jenny also talks about the fact that yoga can be for everyone and we don't need to be a particular shape or flexibility to take up this practice. Her enthusiasm is contagious and I know that you will find her perspectives motivating. So I'm your host Lynn and here is my conversation about yoga with Jenny Dillon. So Jen, it's great to talk to you today and um, I'm so, so pleased. I was so impressed with your presentation at the Cavan Business Women's Club the last day Um, and obviously because yoga can be so beneficial to our health. I'm so pleased to be chatting to an expert like yourself. So I was just wondering, maybe we could start with, um, would you mind sharing with us how you first discovered yoga and what inspired you to become a yoga instructor? Well, Lynn, it was lovely meeting you as well. And uh, thanks so much for having me on to the podcast. Um, I suppose yoga for me, I was never a yogi, as they call them. Um, I was always into fitness, personal training, and I was running my own personal training business. Um, I was actually running two jobs at once. I'm a secondary school teacher as well. So yoga, how I actually came about yoga was I reached burnout and my lifestyle was really, I suppose, going at 100 miles an hour all the time and um, just overworked and not knowing how to say no, I suppose, kept taking on more clients. I was so passionate about my personal training that I just wanted to help everybody. Um, But eventually, look, something had to give and I did hit burnout and um that's when I really discovered and yoga um and I just needed I knew my lifestyle had to change I knew I needed more balance and I had to slow down and I just couldn't do it on my own and mm-hmm. um, I had looked into yoga during COVID but COVID kind of put a halt to the training so this opportunity well I don't know whether it was an opportunity but this situation that life presented and um, led me to pursue my yoga teacher training so yeah it was really seeking balance that got me into the yoga Absolutely. And and often it's when we reach a crisis point in our life that a new path can open up for us. You know, when we, we just know we, we need to change something. Absolutely. Going. It's like that. There was no there was no other option. It was like continue as you are. And there was really that wasn't even an option. So, yeah, yeah the, yoga, the yoga teacher training really, um, you know, 
had I known in advance what I, what I was going to be getting myself in for, I don't think I would have been running um, and so excited about going off. Like it really is a very challenging journey. It's a real self growth journey. You learn so yeah. much about yourself, and yeah, no, yeah. it's yeah. It is comparing it to obviously your um, fitness training to be a fitness instructor. It is much more holistic, I suppose. But um, yoga, um, obviously, with your fitness training, you know, you're talking about certainly, you know, health and aerobic fitness. But yoga would be associated with flexibility and strength. Um, yeah. And on your website, I really like that you mentioned that it um, that yoga creates a space in body and mind to grow and to heal, you know, calming the mind, connecting to body, connecting to breath. So that really resonates with me when, you know, I'm talking to clients about optimizing their digestion, you know. Yeah. So it, I suppose uh, the, the strength is hugely important, you know. So how do you compare, say, the strength training in yoga compared to, say, fitness training? Um, I suppose like when I was doing my fitness training um, I would have always had that kind of my motto was better mind better body and I would have always looked at um, the client in a holistic uh, framework but there is a big big difference when you are comparing the two yoga a fundamental part of yoga is the breath and you're really breathing into the body and breathing your awareness is in a certain in a certain pose, your awareness, your gaze is inwards and um, into the body. So you're really connecting with the body on a deeper level when you're building strength in yoga and when you're active in your poses and um, in the strengthening poses. And then I suppose with your fitness, just that mind body connection doesn't come as easily as I suppose we don't as often connect the breath as much in our fitness training. That's right. And it, so it's it's much more mindful practice. It's training us to be in the present moment, which is for, for me, I'd be think t telling people they need to be in rest and digest, you know, so yoga yeah. is certainly training the brain to, to do that, you know, training us to be in rest and digest. So yoga really does promote emotional well-being and stress relief. And I love the saying on your site, uh, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. So do you think that it's the 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 breathing, the connection to breath that really is the most beneficial aspect for both physical and mental health? Absolutely. The breath is a fundamental part of yoga and it takes new clients weeks, I suppose, to connect to the breath. And without the breath, you're not getting the same benefit in your yoga practice. I always am saying this phrase in my yoga class, uh, breathers have the advantage here um, yeah. because a non-breather is holding their breath in the class. And, I mean, you do need to really connect to the breath To It depends. There's so many different types of breathing techniques. We use different pranayamas in the yoga class and some breath work um, or breathing techniques are energizing where they bring more energy into the body. Some give us increased clarity and focus. Others give us um, a more cooling sensation on the body, good for hormonal balance, while others really stimulate that rest and digest response. So, yeah, the breath is fundamental and the most important, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It's in life. Generally, we do tend to shallow breathe as well. Life is yeah. so fast paced and we're in that fight or flight mode a lot of the time. So it's something so basic. And yet we really, you know, don't often pay a lot of attention. Um, so you mentioned that it can take some weeks for your clients to get into that. Um, and yoga, in the same way that mindfulness is, is usually referred to as a practice. Yes. So it's about consistency, really, isn't it? Um, Absolutely. Like it's like anything new. It's like any new skill you take on. Yeah, you, you have to put in the effort, put in the time and stick with it. Like and regularly. like there's no point saying, oh, I'll do a yoga class here and then I'll do another one there. It's yeah. something you have to stick with um, like anything and, and build that, build that practice. And how would you describe your style of yoga class? Because there's different types of yoga, aren't there? There's so many different types of yoga and that's where the confusion comes. My 
style of yoga, like my main weekly, every regular class would be empowerment yoga. So there is this, um, it's mind body connect. We really, there's a structure to all of my classes. We center the minute we come into the room, we find our breath, we warm up and we, we engage in the physical poses, but it's, I suppose what I'm saying during my class that, um, provides that kind of empowerment to the client. So each week is themed and, we just build um, the poses around the theme and the phrases that I use in the class will all be based around the theme. So clients are leaving, feeling very empowered in their body and in control of their emotions at that time. I hope <laughs> that is the intention. And yeah, it's just a real empowering, feel good um, class. There's a That's mix of effort and surrender, I suppose, in the class. That sounds amazing, Jenny. That sounds like a real experience, you know, and to come away with that that's feeling. What I suppose I got from yoga when I trained and that's the bit that I love that body mind body connection and feeling so good that's what that's why I'm so passionate about it that's why I want to share and give that to every client when they come into the yoga class yeah yeah it's about being present isn't it we can enjoy our lives and show up our yes. best version when when we're when we're in our in our bodies yes. um so I suppose, what are some common misconceptions about yoga and how would you address them? Well, I suppose social media has a lot to answer for good and bad, yeah. but typically you see um, the lean physique, um, flexible, really flexible, handstands, um, headstands, and then you have the, the Buddha at the edge of the mountain meditating. Um, I mean, people are so confused then about yoga and they think it's not for them or their yeah. body etc so there's a lot of misconceptions about what yoga is the different styles of yoga people aren't even aware that there is like yoga for you know a more relaxed restorative style where you completely you stay in poses for five minutes or up to five minutes and um, then you've got your more power yoga you've got you know there's yin yoga there's so many different types so I suppose it's educating people um, on that I'd use my social media to educate people on the types of classes I'm offering and what happens in the class um, and then meditating as well like people are so confused in that I know you had a great guest on was it Willie Horton yes. into your your yeah. episode he just puts it so simply um, about meditating it's fantastic but it really is just focusing on that one thing and we use the breath a lot um, or the flame of a candle within the yoga class to really uh, meditate or moving meditation itself as you move through the poses so there's so many methods um you know that aren't just sitting there in your cross-legged position <laughs> exactly we have an image even when it came to meditation um you know you have this image that you have to you have to have a lot of space in your day and you have to achieve a zen-like state and same with yoga it's like oh my god am I going to be able to do the poses but we all have to start somewhere Absolutely. And like I suppose the training I did was more functional training that it was basically teaching yoga um, for your personal body. So every body is so different and your limbs are different lengths. So when you're learning the poses, it's not about the alignment. It's not about what the pose looks like to the outside world. It's about how the pose actually feels in the body um, and how you connect within the pose. So that's really what I try to teach my clients as well, is that how does it feel um, and you know, using the props to really help them come into uh, what feels good in their body. So you can adapt to suit all body types and also physical ability capabilities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's not like trying to, you know, make this look look pretty. <laughs> exactly. It's it's as you say, it's about how, how you feel. So yeah. do you have, um, you know, uh, any uh, advice about where people would would could start if they've never tried yoga before is there a particular type that would suit them to start with well I, my advice would be to connect find a teacher you connect with because you could go to one yoga class a, a class and absolutely love it and yeah. then go to another one and hate it so I would say dabble don't give up if you you don't enjoy it the first time maybe try a different teacher and that's for me as well like even clients that come to me I'm like try a different teacher as well you're going to mm. get a different experience completely mm. everybody has their own style and um, the style I suppose I would always say try a beginner's class um, and maybe read up about the styles and see what you're looking for the benefits of the different practices because some mm. people are looking for complete rest and digest others are looking for more of a workout yeah um, 
and it just depends, I suppose, on what the client is seeking. Exactly. That's, that's a good way of looking at it. Do you find that um, we say if people have had a busy day and they come into your class that the breath work can really help them to relax into the class? Like, would you do more breath work at the beginning of the class or how do you yeah, incorporate do, it? The breath work is always we do a different breathing technique at the, at the start of the class. Um, and then we would incorporate, obviously, breath throughout the practice or that the clients will be guided to incorporate the breath through all the poses. Um, but yeah, it would always be the start and it does completely like I suppose I can't I can only answer for the clients who spoke to me or written testimonials. But mm. for my personal practice, you know, when I go to the mat, it's not always easy to get to that mat. Yeah. Um, but I know it, within five minutes on the mat, like and sometimes I might only go for 10 minutes, but your frame of mind completely changes. Once you connect that breath, you you're out of your head, you're back into your body, you're into that present moment, whatever mood you're in before, it's gone, it's shifted. Yeah. So I would recommend everybody to try it for five, yeah. 10 minutes, just get, find a space. It doesn't have to be a big hour long practice. And that's certainly not what I do every single day. Um, because we have a life and we are busy and, you know, that's it. But yeah, definitely it does have the power. The breath has the power to change your state. Yeah. Yeah. And so if someone is attending a class, say once a week, um, you know, is it a safe thing for them to practice yoga for a couple of, you know, maybe two or three times in between classes? Or would you recommend that they have done a, you know, a few sessions and really learned how to do it first? Are there any any dangers? I would say follow, you know, if they're following online and they're just tuning in and listening to their body, I always say that to my clients, so find your edge within the pose and don't go beyond it. Um, yeah. You know, if you push too much, you're going to injure. And if you push too little, you're not going to get the benefit of the practice. So it's just yeah. about really tuning inwards, connecting inwards, tuning into the body, the breath and just doing what feels good in the body. Yeah. So and there would be then, I suppose, at risk of injury if they're tuned in, but if they're Russian yeah. Jewish, yeah, maybe yeah. so. Be 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 um be aware and conscious as as you're doing it. And um, obviously, life is so fast these days. Um, do you see more of a demand for your yoga classes? And you know, do you see people trying to incorporate more of these sort of more mindful exercises and practices in in their daily lives? Absolutely. Like when I started out first, I was kind of wary about how it all would go and. Some classes were busy, some weren't. But now at the minute, I have wait lists on all my yoga classes um, that I run in Kingsford and Bailiver. And um, there is a demand. People are looking for um, that, just that support system, somewhere that they can de-stress um, come back into their come back and connect to themselves I suppose really and um, life is so fast-paced and we all need some way of slowing down and look for some people it may not be yoga but um, I do find that there's a lot of people turning to yoga turning to breath to mindfulness nowadays um, as that means of just reconnection and de-stressing yeah mm -hmm. yoga has obviously been quite transformative in your life um can you see it with your um with the people who attend your class that apart from it being a lovely practice to do and they feel great when they leave, you know, would you would you hear back from them that maybe it has a more significant even impact on on their life, that it has a ripple effect really out into the other parts of their lives? Yeah, like as in some clients who have been with me from the very beginning would chat to me regularly about, um, you know, the impact that yoga has. They're now addicts, as they say. Yeah. And um, they just they love it. But like they're not even just the, I suppose, the class and the experience within the class. It is outside that. Not that it's a miracle worker, but it really does. I suppose. So this is some of the feedback is that it has helped benefit their relationships, that they're not as quick to fly off the handle. And mm. um, others, you know, sleep has been a massive um thing as well my clients struggle to sleep at all before coming and that's the number one feedback I get is that their sleep has massively improved their energy levels are there for them up their mood is better and uh, they're able to manage their daily stresses better so I suppose yeah the sleep really kind of has that um spiraling effect in, in a positive way and um, of course yeah and um, you do you do hear lovely things back from clients like about you know 
about their their lifestyle, about their maybe not being so hard on themselves and, you know, being able to process their emotions a little bit better. Like, um, mm. and it is, it's lovely. It's lovely. And that would be more like the long term clients who, you know, feel comfortable saying that to you. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Going back to the whole idea of it being a practice, you know, we are um, or we often can look for a magic bullet, you know, when it comes to. I suppose, fixing something in our lives, you know, whether it's our health or whether it's a situation we're in. But really, it is about consistency and the practice. You know, it's the daily habits, isn't it? The we- daily and weekly habits that we maintain. Yeah, like it's definitely something that you can add to your toolkit and use mm-hmm. it. when you know, it may be a certain it might be a winter, a winter practice for you. It might be a full year. It might be a spring practice or a mm-hmm. summer practice. Um, I find out different clients that come at different times of the year um, or at different periods of their life. Maybe there's something going on or whatever. Um, but it does call to certain people at different times. Um, and like that, it is a practice. And look, there's there's many practices out there. Lots of people go running every day or, yeah. you know, it's something that you can incorporate that would will benefit you holistically. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And help to maintain your your health and your um your good mental health as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Jenny, you do some lovely uh, you do. I know you uh, run workshops and also lovely days out doing yoga on the beach as well. Is it ta- 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 I, Yeah, like I've done, I suppose, depending on the winter season, like with, e- with each season, the yoga kind of changes slightly and you kind of go with the season. So for summer now, we'd have more outdoor events. I suppose in June, I have an event coming up locally in Loch and Lay the mountain um, beside us here between Kingsford and Baylor. So there'll be a lovely, um, it's for summer solstice, a lovely uh, evening event there on a Friday evening. And then I have done the beach events earlier in the year as well. Forest yoga in the local forest here. It's lovely that you can use the facilities and bring people outdoors because the outdoor yoga then is its own special experience as well. It's very different. Yeah. Oh God, I imagine so. Yeah. that Talk about connecting with your body and nature at the same time. Yeah. The it's benefits lovely. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And you have this lovely scenery there around Kings Court and, and Baylor as well to, to take advantage of. Absolutely. So lucky with, with everything that's around that can be used just once the weather is good. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's that's the trick here, isn't it? In, in Ireland. Yeah. Um, so, Jenny, do, do you with regard to your previous fitness training, do you find that you bring any of that into your your yoga training in terms of, I suppose, um, is there any learnings from that as well that you that has informed your yoga practice? Oh, absolutely. I mean, with the fitness, you've built up so not much knowledge over the years about the body and mm. with clients injuries. Um, you know, a lot of clients suffer with low back pain and it's just or did when I was doing the PT and shoulder issues um, and just mobility in general. Um, I would have found a massive problem when I was doing the PT and it was something that frustrated me an awful lot um, with cli- not with clients. It was it was something that really, yeah, I was people didn't like stretching. But now that I've more I have that knowledge um, from the PT, I am able to do certain moves or avoid certain moves in my yoga classes because I know that, you know, too much pressure on the shoulders um, a lot of downward dog can be just way too much for clients or the wrists. Um, and it's just it just does really inform my class planning um, as well, because you want clients to be leaving feeling good, but also long term not to be um, causing any harm to the body. Exactly. So it's uh, your story is lovely because it's like uh, everything, you know, we, we pick up information as as we move through our lives, don't we? And it's lovely to be able to then it all culminates then in, in um, arriving at where, where we feel we we're meant to be. Uh, absolutely Lynn but like it's like I feel I'm always learning like you never know it all or you never will know it all but Mm. um it's such a minefield the yoga in general and I'm addicted to trainings I've been training for the last two summers so I said I'm gonna take this summer off and just apply a bit more um because you just I love I love learning more and more and more but I know um, and then yeah. cer- certainly in the field of health, it's just you never stop. Sure, you don't with CPDs. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 
Mm, brilliant. Well, Jenny, it sounds like you, you've developed a really, really lovely practice with the lovely ethos and that whole idea about empowering people. So you're empowering how they feel about themselves and also their, their physical health as well, you know, so, so well done. It sounds fantastic. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Thanks so, so much. I am um, very passionate about it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's really obvious, you know, and that's contagious. I'm sure, you know, your enthusiasm, you know, filters through your class then, you know, when you have your, your group in front of you. So thank you so much for telling us a little bit more about yoga today, Jen. And um, it was lovely chatting to you. And I am hoping to get to some of those. I know, you know, uh, we don't live that that close together, but I'd love to get to some of the workshops, you know, and because uh, I've, I've been a bit um, sporadic with yoga. Uh, I go back to it every now and then, you know, but um, it definitely sounds like it's something that I should be incorporating more. Um, Lynn, so. I'd love to. There'll always be a place for you on the mat. So, yeah, thank and you. All, and thank you very much for having me on and getting me or allowing me to share what yoga is and just, yeah, how it can benefit, I suppose, the daily lives of some of your clients. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a million, Jen. My thanks again to Jenny Dillon and I'll put uh, links to her website and the socials that you can follow her on in the show notes. So the store cupboard staple for this episode is the vegetable cauliflower, which is a member of the cruciferous family and other members of the cruciferous family are broccoli, kale and cabbages. Now, you'll be most familiar with white cauliflower heads or those heads are co also called curds. Um, and the reason why they stay white is because the leaves protect it from sunlight, which means that the chlorophyll can't develop. But however, you know, you can also find cauliflower in light green or even purple. Cauliflower developed from wild cabbage, which may have originated in ancient Asia. The version that we're familiar with appeared in Turkey and Italy around 600 BC. It gained popularity in France in the mid 1500s and from there became widely cultivated right across Europe. While cauliflower isn't as nutrient dense as some other cabbages, it is still a powerhouse of goodness. It's an excellent source of vitamin K and also contains vitamin C, fibre, potassium, phosphorus, manganese, magnesium and B vitamins, including choline, which is important for memory and learning. Now, it doesn't grow in boron deficient soils. And so generally that means that it's going to be a good source of this trace mineral boron, which is important for our bones. You might remember from a previous episode. Now, cauliflower um, contains antioxidants, which protect our cells from damage and disease. And regular consumption of the compounds that you find in cauliflower, um, of course, as part of an overall healthy lifestyle, may help to build up our resilience to fight diseases like cancer, heart disease, reduce blood pressure, lower cholesterol and support our nervous system and of course our gut. When you're picking your collie in the supermarket check for a good clean white head and green leaves. Now we're familiar with the florets um, but don't forget about the stalk you know so if you're chopping it up um, hang on to the stalk and you can always use that in soups or stews. The longer that you cook cauliflower, the more you'll notice that sulfur sort of smell, you know, and that might have put you off cruciferous vegetables when you were younger. But if you cook it for a shorter length of time, so for example, you could steam it for about five minutes or so or add it to a stir fry, then these sulfurous compounds won't be released and you won't get that smell or that odor in the kitchen. So once we buy it, what can we do with it? Well, we can eat it raw if, if your digestion is up to it with a dip. Now, if you have any issues with your thyroid or iodine deficiency, then avoid eating any of the cabbage family vegetables raw because they contain these goitrogens, which can interfere with the thyroid function. Cooking actually helps to inactivate these compounds. Now you can steam it. Um, I, you, I would often steam it with some broccoli. You know, they take about the same amount of time to cook. Um, you can cut up into even smaller pieces to add to a stir fry and cook up in a few minutes. Um, you can slice. So you get your cauliflower head and just slice it into maybe one inch thick, like 
sort of call them steaks um you know you might see some recipes for cauliflower steaks online um so you can coat it with maybe coconut or olive oil and then whatever spices you like so maybe turmeric and black pepper or i quite like it with paprika as well and you can roast them in the oven or or you can cook them on a barbecue for about 15 or 20 minutes and they're really really lovely and of course you can make soup with cauliflower as well and i'll have uh, links to recipes uh, for every you know lots of things that you could do with cauliflower in the show notes so cauliflower is very easy to cook a powerhouse of nutrition and widely available so hopefully there's enough information there to encourage you to add it to your shopping trolley this week thank you for listening to today's episode I just wanted to clarify that the podcast is for informational purposes only and does not substitute professional care from a doctor or trained health professional, nor constitute medical advice or services if you're in a position to need either. However, if you find it interesting, you can subscribe to make sure you don't miss future episodes or sign up for my newsletter on lyncharkynutrition.ie.